Good morning, everyone. I bring with me a message of hope, and it's the hope of children. If I asked you who the best teacher in the world was, or perhaps still is for you, I wonder what you'd say. Is it someone who inspired you? Someone who made your learning meaningful? Someone who made learning interesting, relevant, or fun? Maybe it was someone who you just liked. Today, I'd like to share with you a teacher who is incredibly attractive, incredibly beautiful. So, a teacher who can teach us so many things. And it's the teacher of nature. And I'd like to talk particularly today about what nature teaches us about the principles of harmony. We see this harmony in the world around us all the time. Maybe we don't see it. It's in the beautifully geometric form of every single flower that has ever existed. It's in the comings and goings of Venus on its eight-year cycle round our planet Earth, creating this perfect five-formed rosette. It's in the diatoms, these symmetrically divided items in our water that are actually able to teach us how clean our water is. It's in the Fibonacci spiral that we see in a snail shell, in a whirlpool, in a galaxy, in the curled up form of a fern, or even in our finger. It's in the hexagonal design of the bee honeycomb. How on earth did they learn how to do that? It's in the six-pointed snowflake. Everyone unique, as unique as every one of us. And it's in the beautiful patterns of a butterfly. A butterfly that teaches us the best trick in the world as it transforms from a voraciously consuming caterpillar into a beautiful, ethereal, enlightened butterfly. What a message that is for change. And of course, it's in every one of our ecosystems where everything is interconnected, everything's joined up, where everyone in that system, every part of that system, has a valued role to play. And this harmony is in us, in our proportions, in our form, in the way we work. We are nature. So what do we do with all that information? We trash it, we pollute it, we degrade it, and too often we destroy it. We don't learn enough from its harmony principles. Three years ago, I read a book called Harmony by His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. And in that book, he states that harmony is an active but balanced state applicable to the natural world and human society. He reminds us that, of course, this message of harmony has been with us for a long, long time. It's been understood by the great cultures, civilizations, and religions of the world, seen here, reflected in, in Islamic art, and in the beautiful rose window of Chartres Cathedral. Harmony replicated in different forms. So it got me thinking, what can we do to shift our teaching practices to put this message of harmony at the core of all that we do? In our school, we teach through inquiries of learning. Inquiry means a seeking for truth. And it's a great way to learn, bringing subjects together, interweaving them, and finding meaningful outcomes. Our younger children learn through their world, the world around them, and indeed them too. 
But of course, as they get older, they want to explore further, a we- further afield. They want to understand the bigger picture. And all the way through, there's a sustainability agenda that says you can do something with this. But this book got me thinking, what can we do to weave through a golden thread into this learning and to put harmony at the start, not the end of that practice? And if we do that, we can create this incredible web of learning, incredible way in which we can understand our world. So it was about stepping back and looking again at how we can get our young people to look at their world in a different way. Let me share with you some of the ways in which we've done that. Last year, we worked with the Prince's School of Traditional Arts and 50 teachers in this county. We asked them to learn about harmony through the seasons, and they took those ideas back into their schools. This is the work of primary school children. In our school, when we learn about Earth in space, We learn about its awe and wonder. Did you know that 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 is the same as 7 times 8 times 9 times 10? And that's the radius of the Earth and the Moon together. For children, maybe for all of us, that's amazing. (laughs) And then from that learning, they explore the shapes and the order and the patterning of our solar system. And they put it together to create this Cosmati pavement. It's a replica of the pavement in Westminster Abbey where the kings and queens of England are coronated. When children learn about bees, they understand that they work brilliantly together. And what they also understand is that if you want to work well with the bees, you have to be calm. You can't be too over the top and loud and excited. I can always tell when children come back in from their time with the bees because they whisper as they walk down the corridor. And of course, bees show us how to get the best results. When we learn about Antarctica, we explore it initially through the hexagonal shapes of the snowflake. It's part of a learning about the awe and wonder of that ice-cold world. And it concludes with an exhibition. Part of the exhibition is carving ice sculptures. So the children put goggles on, they chisel away at these ice, ice sculptures for a whole day. It's usually cold, It's usually wet and windy, but at the end of it, they create something truly stunning. The harsh reality is probably within 24 hours, that ice sculpture has melted and shattered and gone. We do a lot of food growing. We grow right through the school, from the youngest children to the oldest. We grow all our food organically with the grain of nature. There are no pesticides, no fertilizers. When our children learn about ancient Egypt and the fact that they grew crops on that fertile piece of land either side of the River Nile, they grow their own crops and they understand in a defined space what living within limits means. In the summer, they celebrate their food through salads And they understand that nature teaches us again and again that when we eat at the right times, in tune with those rhythms of nature, we eat in abundance. And of course, the best bit is harvesting that produce. Produce that's grown in great diversity. And when they look at the fruits of their labours and they slice open that apple, they see once again the start of the next cycle through the seed of growing. Well, the most important thing for us, it's not a nice job, is to engage our children in monitoring our food waste. So every day, it'll happen today too, they weigh 
and measure and record and analyze the amount of food waste we produce. This is real life learning. And they compost it ultimately back into the soil, the goodness, the nutrients, replenishing that soil ready to grow again. But there's one bit still missing in this process of teaching and learning. Can I ask you just for a moment to close your eyes and imagine being in a rainforest. And I want you to imagine this extraordinary biodiversity, the lungs of our world, incredibly rich with life. And when our children learn about the rainforest, they learn through the soundscapes of that place. And if you open your eyes now, you'll see and you'll still hear these sounds created by children to replicate that incredible diversity. So they shared their sounds with an audience, they sang songs, but the forest was now in their hearts and they wanted to do something about it. They wanted to lead a project of change. Leadership was critical to their well-being in this initiative. So they planted seeds, grew plants, raised money to buy two acres of rainforest, just two acres. It was a small thing, but it was a start. This is an eco-turtle project. It's based on plant-based cleaning products, and the children developed this initiative. They made adverts, they worked out the costings of the project, and then they went out into the, into the community and they shared these plant-based cleaning products. This is their logo. And this month, EcoTurtle as a project has just been adopted by the government of South Africa to take into deprived communities to help them with hygiene and cleanliness in their homes. It came from the imagination of children. If we want our children to be leaders in the future of energy linked to climate change, then the best way is to get them to lead it in schools. For seven years now, our children have led our energy monitoring. They still, this week, are setting new targets, new challenges, and they reward success. And that passion is now leading them to present at a climate coalition event at the Houses of Parliament this summer. So surely, in education, we need to be realizing the potential of our young people to be leaders for a sustainable future. At the end of their time at our school, we take them to Chamonix in the Alps, and we explore three things. On the first day, we look at individual well-being. The children tell us, obviously, that they have physical needs. They need to eat good food, have clean water, to be safe and loved. But they also understand that individual well-being is about realizing potential, standing up for what you believe in, being valued. On the second day, we go into the mountains, we trek. It's hard work. Talking about team well-being is one thing, walking the talk is another. But they realize at the end of that trek that every one of them has a role to play, every one of them is a leader within their team in some way. They tell us that team well-being is seeing need and responding to it. On the last day, we look at the world of Chamonix. They apply their thinking from school into this new place. They look at five areas, energy, water, food, waste, transport, and they think about what they can do to make Chamonix a better, more sustainable community. Solar panels as white as snow, fruit orchards and food markets in the valley, and a ban on anything plastic. So if our children understand the principles of harmony, 
if they are given opportunities to apply that understanding and that learning to meaningful inquiries, and if they are given a role to play, to lead the change that they want to see, then these young people can be the best teachers in the world. So my passionate belief is that we have to now have a revolution in education. We need to move to a better place. And the best way to do that is to give meaning to the measure. And the best meaning in the world is nature and what it teaches us about its sacred principles of harmony. Thank you.